Ever found yourself in the clutches of debt, feeling like there's no way out? Trust me, you're not alone. Today, we're going to unravel the secrets behind eliminating debt and reclaiming your financial freedom. So grab a seat and let's get started. Let's rewind the tape a bit back to when I was a kid. Back in the post-Soviet era, when I was growing up, my parents were struggling. The whole economy seemed to be crumbling. People standing in line for three hours at a time for a bread. It got a little bit better with abundance of things available, but not enough money to purchase it. My family had to save money to buy winter shoes, let alone a washer. They were drowning in debt, couldn't afford the most simple things and clueless about how to swim out of it. Between the sea of bills, credit cards and stress, it was getting unmanageable. With time, they used strategies to get out of debt and feel less stressed out. And watching them go through this, I wanted to make sure that I will do anything I can to never get into such debt. And I tell you what, it requires a lot of planning, a lot of strategizing and budgeting and mindset strength to do that. Today, I want to share the strategies I used to teach my construction business clients how to avoid and eliminate debt. Now let's talk tactics. There are different approaches to destroying the debt, but two major players are the snowball and avalanche methods. The snowball method is like starting a snowball at the top of a hill and watching it grow as it rolls down. You start with the smallest debt gaining momentum. It's about the quick victories. So create a list of all the debts that you have from the smallest to the highest. Target your smallest debt first, for example, a medical bill that seemed insignificant. Then move on to the next. The satisfaction of paying it off is very significant. On the other side, the avalanche method is about strategically attacking the debt with the highest interest rate. It may not provide quick wins, but financially, it could be a powerhouse. My friend opted out for the avalanche. He faced a big high interest credit card. Crushing that first gave him the momentum to conquer the rest of his debts. Next up, enter the emergency fund, a shield for protecting you from unexpected financial attacks. When my stepdaughter's car decided to play hide and seek with its engine light, our emergency fund was our superhero cape. No need for credit cards, just a calm, collected response. Same thing for your business. You have to establish and maintain emergency fund to cover unexpected expenses. Having a financial caution can help the business weather temporary setbacks without resorting to debt. Another thing you can do is create a risk management plan for each product to identify potential challenges. That's important. Consider external factors as market conditions, regulatory changes, other influences. You have to implement risk mitigation strategies and factor potential risks into the project pricing. Negotiating is another weapon in your arsenal. Whether it's your salary or interest rates, you have to sharpen those negotiation skills, especially when it comes to the medical bills. My mom is visiting from another country and we had an ER visit with her. She is doing good right now, but I'm going to do some serious negotiating because she doesn't have a health insurance in the US and the bill is pretty big. Negotiation might seem daunting, but it's worth a shot. Debt settlement is another thing. You can negotiate to settle your debt for less than what you owe. In business, you can create strategic partnerships and alliances. You can establish strong relationships with suppliers and subcontractors. You can negotiate bulk purchase discounts and maybe favorable credit terms with suppliers. You can leverage partnerships to share resources and reduce the need for additional financing. Now, let's dive into the insights from The Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. Turning your personal finances into a well-organized system. If you haven't checked out Profit First yet, consider it your guide to restructuring your finances for the better. And check out my latest video about implementing Profit First method in your business and personal life. And don't forget to subscribe for more. Mike suggests treating your personal finances like a business by allocating money for debt elimination right from the start. Envision these allocations as designated spaces for your money, each serving a specific purpose in your financial landscape. One of the buckets, aka bank accounts, that Mike is suggesting is profit. 
where you are setting aside a specific portion of your income. Well, you would need to use a significant part of that amount and dedicate it to solely debt repayment. This intentional approach acts as a roadmap directing your money towards the most effective use. Now let's transition into the art of effective budgeting. No magic, just practical tactics to navigate your financial landscape. There are a lot of budgeting apps out there. Budgeting allows you to understand your spending patterns and redirect funds towards debt elimination strategically. I use the old-fashioned pen and paper when it comes to personal finances of the family, and then I use QuickBooks Online to track my business spending. I create monthly budgets and I stick to them. Making data-driven decisions has been so underrated. Yes, it takes time to create the budget because you have to first put together all the necessary things that you spend your money on and then see what could be eliminated, renegotiated or set aside, for example, to save for big purchases. And it takes even more time to actually track what has been spent against your budget to make sure you never go over, but it's very rewarding. When it comes to your construction business, you need to make sure that you perform a thorough planning and budgeting. You need to develop detailed business plans and construction project budgets, anticipate potential costs and create contingency plans to address those unexpected expenses. You need to ensure that project estimates are accurate you need to account for materials, labor, equipment, overhead, very tactically. You must have a financial discipline and stick to the budget. Regularly review financial statements, your KPIs. You have to monitor and control expenses to ensure profitability on every single project. Let's explore strategies to boost your income. That is a crucial component of your financial toolkit. Think of these strategies as like practical tools to enhance your capabilities. You can negotiate your salary, explore side hassles, invest into your skills. You have to stay informed about the industry standards, regulations, market conditions, attend workshops, conferences, seminars, stay updated and improve your skills. If you invest into your skills to become an expert in your field, that will boost your income, which will help with elimination of debt. The next one is cash flow management. Maintain a healthy cash flow by invoicing properly and promptly on your receivables. Consider staggered payment schedules tied to the project milestones and require a good deposit. You have to stop funding your clients' projects. You are not an interest-free bank. You have to negotiate favorable payment terms with clients and you have to clearly define payment schedules in contracts. So there's no delays in revenue collection. Another thing is your equipment. You have to evaluate the necessity of purchasing equipment versus renting it. Consider frequency of equipment usage and the financial impact of that ownership. You have to explore financing options with favorable terms if you purchase the equipment. That is all for today. If you found this information helpful, please share your thoughts in the comments, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Till next time.